Hello and welcome to this tutorial video for exporting a UV wireframe from Lightwave, editing it in Photoshop and then bringing it back into Lightwave to UV texture and object. My name is James and let's just jump right into it as Philip DeFranco would say. So first of all, uh, select your UV texture. So go down to the texture tab here, then click on the drop down here and select the texture that you'd want to export as a wireframe minus metal sheet. It will appear in the top left hand corner or wherever you have your UV textures appearing. If you can't see the UV texture, then simply go to a drop down here and then click from, uh, let's say for example, uh, top, which is usually what the top left is, and then select UV texture and it will select it here. And I have just lost my, oh, uh, there it is, it's back. <laughs> okay, so to export this as an as a, uh, a UV texture, as a UV wireframe, sorry, go to save, go to export, and select the export EPS option here, which is the third option up from the bottom. When the dialog box opens, now, there's a few key things here. Number one, where it says view, change it from all of the above to texture UV because if you select all of the above, it will take the, the screen as you see now, all of this, and export that into the same file as well if you don't want that. So texture UV, untick the draw grid option because what that does is that will include this grid just here, which will bake it in to the UV texture and you don't want that. So export file, click on that and select where you want to export the file to. <clears throat> mine goes into my contents folder, uh, LW, which then goes into objects and I'm going to name mine deodorant can, uh, can bottom and then click save. Where it says page size just here, this is the size of the EPS that you're exporting. So six inches by six inches isn't really that big when we're talking about image editing. So you can change this to whatever you want. Remember that the bigger that you make it, the more you can include. But if yours is on a, if you're doing a small object, don't include too much because otherwise the texture will appear very cramped. So I'm going to change mine to 20 inches by 20 inches, not zero, 20 by 20 and then click OK, that will export it into uh, the objects file, which you can just see here. Click and drag this into Photoshop. Yes, Photoshop, U, open, now, thank you. Drop it into Photoshop. A dialog box will come up saying rasterize EPS format, change the mode from CMYK to RGB, which is red, green, and blue, the red, green, and blue color channels. That'll change the image size, it doesn't really matter here. Um, and then click OK. So when it loads up, you'll see that because I've saved as a 20 inch by 20 inch grid, that means that this is at 50%. So now we want to drag in our UV texture. So go to where your UV texture is. Mine is in Lightwave and Images, and it is Can Bottom. So drag and drop that in. Drag and drop it over the file, over the UV wireframe. Now it doesn't fully cover up the UV wireframe, but because it's a big image, this is only at 27%, which means I can simply Click there to uh, connect the, um, to link the height and the width to make sure that it is uh, proportioned, that's what I'm looking for. And just click the up arrow there and enter to uh, confirm the changes. Now drag this underneath the wireframe and you'll see that the wireframe is completely covered by this texture. Here's a really big thing. Do not export it simply as this because what you'll be doing is baking the wireframe into the image which is not what you want to do unless you're making something which is deliberately uh, made with the wireframe texture on the outside. I don't really know why you'd do that um, but if you're doing that it's up to you. So make sure to turn this layer off then go to save as, which is command shift and S. So I'm going to save mine as deodorant can can bottom and save it as a JPEG, not a PNG. If you've got to preserve transparency, save it as PNG, otherwise it's JPEG, because PNGs use a lot of space. They're very big files, so click save. 
and we'll leave it at 10. There we go, so let's go back into Lightwave. In Lightwave, to load the image up, go to the drop down here, select it, come on, computer, go to load image. Go to where the image is. Mine's already in the folder. I just need to scroll down. There it is, can bottom, double click. Lightwave would then load it up as the uh, background of the UV just here. So once it's loaded up, you'll see it's in the background just here. So go to uh, surface editor. In the surface editor, select the surface that you want to apply this to. So with your with this you should have a layer, the layer name which is mine is here, which is metal sheet. You'd have a, a UV texture and a surface assigned to that. So click in edit node graph, then go to um, add node, then go to uh, 2D textures and image. I'm going to unplug mine from here. That's already done, I don't need that one, that's for the purpose of this tutorial. Double click on this and select image can bottom, then go to mapping and select UV map, go to UV map and select metal sheet, and then click simply drag color to color. And if we look now, we'll see that this is UV textured. So if I take this away a second, you can see it's just the surface color, which is white. If I take this and apply it to color to color, now it's fully UV textured. So that is how to um, and then I can texture the rest of the can, obviously I don't want it to be left blue because it looks horrible. Um, I've got to texture the rest of the can. So that is how to export a UV wireframe as an EPS. This is all native to Lightwave. There is a plugin I believe called UV Imaginator, which um, is a bit different. It's, it's the same thing, but it's a different method. But this has been exporting an EPS uh, UV wireframe into Photoshop, then designing it, doing whatever in Photoshop so that you're not working completely blind without a UV wireframe, and then bringing that image into Lightwave in order to UV texture an object. Thank you very much for watching. My name is James, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.